important. I started no, out, and it is saying, pure hypocrisy. I started out by saying there is a rich vein of hypocrisy in British life, as reflected by Fleet Street. Well, so, so I am not a hypocrite. Fleet Street editors oh, guilty of it as well. I, there is public. no way. Forty years in newspapers, there is no way I would go to officialdom, to bureaucracy, before I published. I see myself as a watchdog in the public interest. I am not the lapping dog of Whitehall of Westminster. And when you think that this man went to his assignations with this call girl in a Ministry of Defence car with a soldier driving it as a chauffeur, and, and you say to me, why didn't you go to the Security Commission? You've got to be joking. But isn't yes, there an element look. of a good read, just a basic, oh, good, yeah. juicy and read about it? That's right. There oh. is, you see, you the, real, no, the no, real no, no, motivation no. is not the public good or being upright, decent, respectable. There is a prurient element of this is a good story. It goes back centuries, you know. It's always been there. It was there with Profumo. It was there with Parnell and Kitty O'Shea. It was there with Oscar Wilde. The British public loves gossip. Bits, but why should you? No, but I'll look. And so I, I, I will concede look, look. that we didn't do that because we thought it was in the interest of national defence. Really, we did it because it was a damn good story. You really are posturing. Now, investigatory journalism is one. No, uh, you don't deserve to I win, said which that. is we, even It was better. a good story. I uh, said we did it because it was a good story. Your you husband, Ted no, Castle, would have been the first to have recognised no, no, a good story. No, no, because Ted Castle suffered considerably. Uh, from, he didn't believe me when I used to complain, of the press manufacturing stories to, to uh, discredit people. And he said, oh, you politicians are all too sensitive about the press. And then yeah, it happened yeah. to him when he was very ill in a hospital. And I will never forgive the press. It was the Daily Mail, that one. Well, well, yeah, you which is, what sort of way would you like the press no. to portray politicians or no. to treat politicians? No. May I, I was trying on a chain of thought, please. Investigatory journalism, I'm all for. And the press has a duty, and the press has a very, very important role to unearth something which has happened and which the establishment is trying to keep dark, as they were in this case and they were in the Profumo case. Absolutely right. But persecution plus checkbook journalism is an entirely different thing. And I have had many examples during my long political career of the press creating stories. I remember an hour in Bevan in the 1950s. He lived in a flat just off Sloan Square, a first floor flat. Nye was at that time, had been Minister of Health in trouble, you remember, for resigning from the government, all the battles over creating the National Health Service and the rest of it. And he was the enfant terrible of the press. The Daily Express hired a room in the other side of the road, the same first floor level, and had a long range camera trained in Nair and Bevan's sitting room day and night. Now, that I call absolute in inexcusable pandering to prejudice, not to truth. And it's happened to me, I've had, well, some of them I suppose I can't complain about. When I introduced the breathalyzer, what happened? The Daily Express was in the bar of my local public house the following Sunday, waiting to see if any of us, my family, took a drink before go driving home. Oh, I mean, the is things that, that they do to you, oh my dear. Can, can I, can is I that stop? outrageous, They, they bribe, Barbara, look, they bribe. Is that, is that outrageous, the idea that we'll see if the minister responsible for the breathalyzer has a drink in a pub? Is that totally out of court? Should no, we not I, do that? No, I said that I, as things have happened to me which I would excuse such as, all right, I've introduced a breathalyzer, so they plant their plain clothes texts in everywhere I go. Mm -hmm. And, but, it can go to lengths. I mean, I've known, for instance, I've been in hospital for operations at the time, I was Minister of Health and fight, fighting pie beds in public, in, in National Health Service hospitals, and they bribe. They have bribed Can I just stop the there, staff of Barbara the hospital Castle. to find out whether I was in a private bed. Can I just stop you there? Nicholas Fairbairn, you once wrote in, in Who's Who that making love was, was one of your recreations. Isn't that the sort of thing that invites press interest into, into your... Well, or is that the sort of thing that... Making love was everybody's recreation. I'm not <laughs> saying it's Ted Heath's recreation. And not I'm not public. saying it's some people's <laughs> recreation. But anybody for whom it isn't a, a supreme recreation isn't a human being, whether they're a politician or an archbishop, other than of the Roman faith. Now, 
Uh, I have had an experience in which when I was a minister, I was unmarried, I had a girlfriend, uh, and she had, uh, the press alleged that a, an incident had occurred in which she was supposed to have hanged herself from a lamppost, which was totally false. I could do nothing about that. She alleged, not the press. She did not allege. It was. A she was in my office alleging that. I mean, I didn't dream it. So you, alleged, you then uh, she alleged, alleged that she tried to kill herself. You then printed it as a result of her allegations. Well, it's yeah. Only with qualifications, because Nicholas Fairburn is an expert in defamation. Well, totally, I mean, the thing is totally untrue, and she. I accept that it's untrue. And when the press then persecuted yeah. her, she said it was totally untrue. Yeah, well, I'll that accept was, that. No, 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 if she comes along and to, says no, 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 it... I, I, the point I want to get is this. Uh, if, if you're a politician, uh, it is quite wrong that the press nowadays, when the public are anxious in the great permissive age about their own sexuality, that they should then try and make out that what a, what a politician does at home and in bed is of the slightest importance uh, uh, about his job. It is absolute hypocrisy. If he gets himself into a situation of blackmail, that is a national issue and is totally different. If the Archbishop of Toodaloo is preaching uh, chastity and practicing promiscuousness, there is a national issue. But if the Archbishop of Toodaloo uh, prefers to drink Campari, when he's making love to his wife, it's nothing to do with the public. And he's That's no better or worse than our very That's right. I'll give you an example. Just a very quick uh, point. Mrs. Mrs. Thatcher is preaching the Victorian values and the sanctity of family life. One of her well, top left tenants. Victorian values? One of her what top left Victorian values? Cecil Parkinson is involved in a sexual affair with his former secretary. Well, all Sorry. Victorians were that involved in sexual affairs. That is rank blatant hypocrisy, and it's up to us as newspaper men to expose no, it. All Victorians were involved in affairs, and that actually saved marriage. That's not now what Mrs. Thatcher have. meant. Now that we, is not what no, no, Mrs. No, Thatcher meant. No, no, no. My wife, it didn't. We have marriage in series. Uh, uh, or adultery in series because we just get another. We just divorce and marry and divorce and marry. Instead of having them in parallel, as the Victorians did, we have them in the series. Wife, I'll have to stop you there. Derek Jameson, Barbara Castle, Nicholas Fairbairn, thank you very much indeed for, for joining us on this discussion. We'll be back next week with another edition of Hindsight. Until then, goodbye. Tell that to me.